I need a man. I don't care what he shows me. I don't care what he does. I just want to be married. Do, did y'all not see Risa Tisa? Hello? What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. So today we are reviewing Love is Blind Season 6, Episode 12, The Finale. First of all, why was this episode an hour and 30 minutes? Y'all could have condensed that a little bit. Let's get right into the video because, as always, I have a whole lot to say, especially about Clay and AD. Ooh, but before we do, please don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you are made aware every time I post a new video. So as this episode opens up, we pick up where we left off, the conversation between Jimmy and Chelsea, where he's asking her what she's gonna say at the altar. Because in the last episode, Jimmy sounded like he was 1000% sure that he was going to marry Chelsea. Chelsea starts off by saying that she had a rough day and she reminds Jimmy that he had a rough day too, because you know she always has to do that. But Jimmy says that he's really confident in their relationship. And then he also says that Chelsea is everything that she wants in a wife, he loves her to death, and he wants them to work so bad, but he does not want to go to the altar. He just can't. Chelsea is better than me, if I'm honest, because he probably wouldn't have even been able to finish that sentence before I got my ass up and left. I would be gone. <laughs> and I've only known you for what, a couple weeks? Bye, okay? But Jimmy says that Chelsea mentioning Amy and Johnny being such a strong couple, stronger than the two of them, that really bothered him. And I was like, so he was really, really upset about that. Chelsea asked Jimmy, why did you even propose to me? And Jimmy said, because you said you looked like Megan Fox. <laughs> okay, I'm playing. He didn't say that, but I'm sure that's what he was thinking. Chelsea then asked Jimmy, why didn't you tell me earlier? We had such a great day today. And I said that in my previous review, the last two dates that they had went really well. They didn't argue about anything. And Chelsea says that she feels like Jimmy knew the entire time that he didn't want to marry her and he just wasted her time. And I agree. You know the moment I think Jimmy really knew that he wasn't marrying Chelsea? I don't want to let you go. Is that what you're expecting? Um. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely she definitely lied to me on, on some uh, how she looked. Yep, right there. But Jimmy claims that he was 100% sure that he wanted to marry Chelsea before that last argument that they had. Chelsea claims that she has to walk on eggshells around Jimmy and she can't tell him her true feelings and that he gets upset. And when Jimmy asks for an example of what the hell she's talking about, she couldn't give one. I'm walking on eggshells with you. I can't tell you things that hurt my feelings because you get so upset. Like what? Child, when Jimmy did, <laughs> I screamed. <laughs> Cause he's like, like what? Give me an example. And she couldn't. And in all honesty, in all of these episodes, we've seen Jimmy just sit there and take it while Chelsea just rams into him about whatever. He's literally sat there and took the time and listened to her, let her discuss her emotions, her concerns, even when some of them were absolutely ridiculous. Chelsea then says that Jimmy is throwing in the towel over one argument. Chelsea, you say that after every argument, that is not how addition works, okay? You have to add up all of the arguments and then you get the sum, okay? That's that's how you get the, the total of the amount of arguments you guys have had. So one plus one is two, not one, okay? Jimmy brings up Chelsea mentioning that he slept with his friend when he told her off camera and in confidence. Jimmy says that Chelsea disrespected him and the friend. And he says that he's not upset about his reputation. He was trying to protect his friend's reputation. And he just can't fathom marrying Chelsea after she did something like that. And in all honesty, I agree with Jimmy. Chelsea brought up three scenarios in that one argument. And in all honesty, I don't think any of them happened. I don't think Mackenzie ever called Chelsea to tell her that she saw Jimmy out at the bar. I don't think that Jimmy was out with Jess. I don't think that Jimmy was out with his best friends either. I think that Chelsea was indeed fishing and in a desperate, drunken rage, she revealed some information and it was unnecessary. And this isn't the first time that we've seen Chelsea do that. She did it with AD and Jimmy when they were on the beach. Here's the vibe that I get from Chelsea. When she's upset or drunk or she's feeling insecure about Jimmy and any other woman that she feels like Jimmy might be attracted to, she will do things to embarrass Jimmy and that woman. Chelsea is the type of woman that you can't be in the same room with her 
and a man that she likes and she gets the feeling that that man likes you. Y'all can be out and the guy that she likes will come up to the both of y'all, say hey to the both of y'all, and he'll say, hey, your hair looks nice. And before you can even say thank you, Chelsea will be like, well, you know that's a weave. You know that's not her hair, she has extensions. Oh, and you think she's hot? She got a boob job. And if she's your friend, and the guy that she likes likes you, oh, she's gonna tell that guy all of your secrets to embarrass you. That is just the vibe that I get from Chelsea. But I must say that I am curious about the timeline as to which Jimmy told Chelsea that he slept with one of these women, okay? Was it before she met them, when they were getting ready or whatever? Jimmy was like, hey babe, we're about to meet up with two of my friends. Just wanna let you know so you're not uncomfortable. I did sleep with one of them once okay it was a one-time thing i just wanted you to know that before we go and meet with them and chelsea's like oh, okay no problem that's fine if she wasn't fine with it she should have said it then okay but that is very different from chelsea and jimmy coming home from meeting with the friends and you know debriefing and chelsea's like oh my god i love your friends they're so great and jimmy's like oh that's great you really like them chelsea's like yeah and jimmy's like great because i fucked one of them Big difference, <laughs> big difference. I would like to know how that went down. In regards to them being friends with exes or people that they were intimate with, Jimmy says that Chelsea is still in contact with her ex and they had dealings way more recently than he had with his female friend. Chelsea says, yeah, but I'm not texting him and calling him all throughout the day. That's what you and your friends do. Jimmy says, yeah, but he was the first person that you called when we were able to get our phones back. He's the first person that you call. So clearly you two have a very close relationship. Then we see Jimmy claiming that he can't remember saying that he wanted to pull back from having sex with Chelsea and Jimmy, everyone in America is looking at you like, Boy, what are you talking about? We all saw that, he can't remember it. I'm not even gonna take the extra time to insert the clip here because we all seen it, okay? Jimmy then says that Chelsea revealed his biggest, deepest, darkest secret. And Chelsea's like, oh really? You effing your best friend? That's your biggest secret? <laughs> and Jimmy was like, you know what? Keep it up, continue to show me why I'm making the right decision. And I said, oof. And Chelsea gets up and she walks away, but I didn't get too excited because I know how Jimmy and Chelsea are. They come back, they apologize, they do their little dance, but to my delight, that was the very last time that we saw those two for the entire episode. But in all honesty, after this scene, I was like, hold on, Jimmy, though, hold on. What was that about? Because you led Chelsea on in this conversation to believe that you were 100% gonna marry her. Then you let her pour her heart out to you just to dump her. You could have broken up with her that morning. I don't know if you just wanted to ride some roller coasters, get a free dinner, but you could have, you knew that when you woke up this morning that you were gonna break up with her. Anyway, so now that that's over, we go to Amy and 80's bachelorette party, which I couldn't take very seriously because it looks like it took place at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon. But it looks like they had a great time. Amy and AD had a little chat about Amy and Johnny having sex. And I am so confused because I feel like it switches from episode to episode. One episode, I think that they slept together. The next episode, I don't. I don't know. But I guess maybe that's on me because they never flat out said and confirmed that they have had relations. So, okay. And it's not our business in all honesty. But they just say things like, we're having a great time. The chemistry is 11 out of 10. So, okay, who knows? But AD is not buying it. You don't gotta pretend with me. <laughs> Ain't no way! That girl is too spicy. She fucking that man, but... <laughs> We see Clay at the bachelor party with his friends and he's telling them that AD is great, the sex is good, the chemistry, she gives best friend vibes, she validates me, she validates, oh my gosh. If I hear Clay say that one more time and he's gonna say it multiple times in this episode, but AD validates me, she fights for me. She's gonna keep this relationship going because I'm a lot and she accepts all of my flaws. Baby, does that not sound like a headache? Does that sound like a person that anyone would wanna go into a relationship with? You, you sound like stress. But Clay says that he loves her and he wants to be the best father and husband for her. And I do believe that Clay wants to be all of those things, but he's just not ready yet. And that's okay, that's okay. But why did you come on this show? When you know that the end, okay, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Now it's time for Clay and AD's wedding. 
So AD pulls up in the Rolls Royce. Okay, she is so excited. She says that she is the first out of seven siblings to be getting married. And in all honesty, her saying that made it sound like it was an accomplishment for her. And I know that marriage is for many, but marrying someone who constantly speaks about cheating on you and who doesn't come home, not much of an accomplishment, baby. It's just giving, I have a husband. I don't know where he at right now. I don't know where he's been the past couple of days. I don't know who's this number that keeps showing up in his phone, but I got a husband though. That, that's what it's giving. AD says Clay makes her feel like she can be herself and he's so fine and he's so chocolate. Clay is saying that he loves AD and she's a writer and their relationship has been very on brand. He feels like today is the finals of a graded test paper and he is here to ace the test. Okay, next we see AD's mom come in with her pimp hat, honey, and she lets AD know that she had a conversation with Clay's mom and she absolutely loves her. She tells AD that she would have handpicked Clay's mother to be her mother-in-law. It is so beautiful because the family's getting along and loving each other just makes any marriage that much more meaningful. I loved that the mamas got along so well. Next, we see 80s mom give her her grandmother's jade necklace to wear down the aisle. That was a very beautiful moment. And then we meet Clay's daddy. Now, if you've been here for any amount of time, you know that I have been wanting to see Clay's daddy, okay? Not what I expected. I just thought I would see clay with some wrinkles and some gray hair okay like a silver fox or something like that but the show must go on and when he opened his mouth it didn't make things much better either okay clay's dad starts telling him about his sports history and about how proud that he was of clay and his accomplishments and then clay's dad gives him a speech that to me was more fitting of like a speech that you would give in a locker room before a football game not for your son who is about to get married. And I really wish that in this moment, Clay's dad said something to the effect of, even though I didn't do right by your mom, you are not me, you are better than me. And even though I am so proud of all of your accomplishments thus far, nothing will make me more proud than watching you be an amazing, loving, caring, and faithful husband to AD. Don't make the mistake that I made with your mom. That is what Clay needed to hear in that moment. Not no damn, let's go get them boys, uh, football speech. Not that damn basketball game speech that you did, sir. But maybe that's all he had, okay? Next we see AD in her dress. She looks damn good. They could have closed the slit a little bit more because I was like, damn, one wrong step and her whole hoo-ha would be out. But she looks beautiful and the body was banging, okay? We see Clay and his mom. And I really hope that after this, they do go to therapy. The whole family and they can discuss everything that has happened and how it's affecting Clay into his adulthood because what Clay's parents went through holds so much weight in his life. But we'll go a bit deeper into that a little later. Anyways, we see AD walking down the aisle and when she gets up to Clay, Clay is like, okay, body, okay, you got that shit on. And even as they're giving their vows, Clay makes sure to mention that he needed to know what AD looks like before proposing. But then when he saw her, he was like, I can work with that. I'm sorry, AD gets so hyped when he says that. I don't think that's a compliment. <laughs> I don't think that's a compliment at all. I can work with that. It sounds like you're settling. If he said something like before he saw her, he was nervous and then when he saw her, oh my God, my mind was blown. She was so beautiful. She exceeded my expectations. That's a compliment. I can work with that. It's not a compliment. That's like what I say when I'm going out last minute and I go look for an outfit and I don't find exactly what I want, but I find something and I'm like, all right, I could work with that. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> it's not what I wanted, but it's like, all right, it'll do. That's pretty much what I hear every time Clay says that. And that is not the first time that he said that in regards to AD. In Clay's vows, he's saying that he's a lot to deal with, but he's grown so much and they make a fantastic team. AD says that Clay is her safe space. He's raw, he's authentic, he's fun, and they could just, ah, any minute of the day. And I'm like, okay, girl. And did y'all hear this part when the wedding officiant says, you know, the whole speech, you two fell in love sight and unseen in a world where looks don't matter. And Clay was like, oh, I didn't say all of that. Clay. Child, anyways, they ask Amber first and she says, I do. And then they ask Clay and Clay says, AD, I love you. I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do. When I still need work, I still need to get to the point where I'm 100% in. I for me and we'll let it work. 
I'm sorry. And as much as this hurt AD, when I tell you I am so happy that Clay did that, I am so happy that Clay did that, okay? And I am equally so concerned that AD is so shocked. Baby, Clay has been telling you over and over in so many ways that he is not ready to be married. I'd rather him end it now. I mean, he could have ended it sooner, honestly, but at least he didn't go through with the marriage. He did you a favor, babe. And of course, in this moment, AD is hurt. She's embarrassed. She's confused. She's like, what the F? And she's like, she's ready to go. But I do love that when she was walking away, Clay's mom hugged AD. I just felt like that was so sweet, so kind, especially in that moment. But AD's walking away, she's sobbing, her mom is sobbing, and then we switch to Clay and his mom, and Clay's mom tells him that he should not feel forced to say I do. Him saying I do should actually be what he feels inside, and I agree with that 100%. This part broke my heart. AD is crying and she's saying she's so confused and she's never enough. Okay, now I'm gonna have to preach. You Y'all know how I get down. This is what happens when you put all of your self-worth and your value in someone else's hands. Let me tell you something. You determine your self-worth, okay? Not anyone else. And what someone decides to do to you and not do to you or do for you and not do for you is not a reflection of who you are and your worth. That's just something that that person decided to do. But if you continue to leave your self-worth up to other people, you will be so broken down. And AD saying that in that moment also reaffirmed that she has no business being married either. She doesn't even know who she is outside of another person. She doesn't even know her worth unless a man validates it for her. That is dangerous. That is so dangerous. I'm gonna talk about that more a little bit later, but next we see Clay's dad and he tells him that he's proud of him and all that matters is that he's comfortable with his decision. Clay says that he loves AD, but he doesn't feel like it was strong enough in the short space of time. And he doesn't understand what's going on with her finances like that. I'm like, where did that come from? We didn't even hear you having any doubts about AD's finances until now. Like, where did that? We never even seen them really speak about finances, in all honesty. But next we see Clay, he goes to speak to AD and he keeps calling what he did a game time decision. Again, Clay and his daddy with these damn sports references, okay? This is not a game. <laughs> this is marriage. Do y'all know, are y'all in an arena or are y'all at a wedding venue? This is, this a, is wedding. a wedding. Did anyone did anyone tell y'all that y'all were at a wedding? Clay is telling AD that he's not saying no to her. It's just that he's saying no to getting married right now. And he also says that she wouldn't want him to say yes and be half-assing the marriage. And Clay is right. He's right. In all honesty, AD should have been running away from this man long before today. He asks AD for a hug and she's like, sure. And then he kisses her, which I always find weird when couples break up and they kiss, but whatever. He kisses her and he says that he's gonna put the work in, he's gonna go to therapy and he's not rejecting or giving up on her. I feel like Clay has the impression that he can say no and still date AD when AD already told him, like, if you say no, I'm not dating you anymore. And I hope that she sticks to that, but I guess we're going to have to wait to the reunion to see if she does. Okay. Chow, next we have a moment between Clay's parents. Okay. And I'm going to put a big piece of the clip in here because it was a lot. Okay. With a marriage. Okay. Is it sacred? He struggles with that. All of those emotions and twisted unfeelings, he took that to the altar. And a lot of that stems from things that you have to explain and then apologize. Don't make excuses. Just apologize so that closure can be here. Here's the thing too, Rita. I can't ever remember my father ever being a part of my life. I've always told you I forgave her. But there are things that have came out in the end that I did not know about until this experience. I was hurt. That doesn't mean that we have to pass on that brokenness to our kids. Absolutely. Tell me somebody like you. Huh? I met you. You know, tell me somebody like his mom. Yeah, but you met me, but you wasn't good to me. Okay? So... We won't talk about that anymore. Okay. To think that Clay's mom had to find out on this show that Clay's dad took Clay on these trips with him, I can only imagine 
how that opened up old wounds for her and then to see the effect that her ex-husband's actions had on her son and his ability to commit in a relationship. And then you hear Clay's dad use the same excuse that Clay has been using as if this is a generational curse. Like I said before, I really think that this family needs to sit down with a therapist. I think that it would be so helpful and healing to all three of them, in all honesty. I'm so proud of Clay's mom for leaving that situation and even standing her ground in this conversation and not letting Clay's dad try to sweet talk her or make light of what happened. Like, no, you had me, you had a good woman and you didn't treat me right. Ain't shit funny or cute about that. And you can see that Clay's dad has deep regret for what he did. He made his bed and he's lying in it and he don't look too happy. And we see what's going on with Clay. I will say this, I do wish the best for all of them, for AD's family, for Clay's family. Like I said before, Clay has a lot of work to do, but AD also has a lot of work to do. And I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. But for now, let's get into Amy and Johnny. It was all rainbows and sunshines with them. Amy's parents already love Johnny's sisters. The family, they just, oh my gosh, it's just love. Love is just in the air all around. Both sets of parents are 100% supportive. They're happy. It looks like they're gonna have some really nice family dinners. Both Amy and Johnny are 1000% sure that they've met their person. Amy shares a really beautiful moment with her parents and her dad lets her know that her grandparents are so proud of her. Amy's dad and her brother walk her down the aisle. It was such a beautiful moment. They made sure to honor both Amy and Johnny's grandparents at the wedding. Both Amy and Johnny said, I do as expected. I'm so happy for them. And you can see the love between them. You can see the love between their families. And I have such high hopes for the both of them and I wish them nothing but the best. And I hope that they work out, you know, that whole birth control thing because it still seems like things aren't 100%. Maybe Amy will be pregnant at the reunion. Who knows? <laughs> Child next day show was Clay. And I'm like, why is he still here? Go home. But he's just saying that he feels really stupid and he didn't know what a big thing today would be. And I'm like, Clay, have you not seen the show before? Hello. Next we see AD and she says that there is nothing, nothing that Clay could have told or shown her that would have changed her answer. AD, that is not good but at least she says that she's not going to continue to date Clay. And if he didn't pick her, someone else will. And that she's waiting for it to be her turn. AD is on the hunt for another outside source to value her because that's the only way that she can value herself. And I hate this for AD. I really hope that she switches therapists and I'm not even being funny, I'm not even being shady, but I hope she gets a refund too because the one that she's been going to, no ma'am. No, ma'am. I really hope that AD heals and understands that she, by herself, is 100% of a person. She's not this incomplete, broken person who needs a man to come along and complete her. She doesn't need a man in her life to have meaning. Yes, love is beautiful, love is good, but you should be coming from a place where someone is adding to your life. And again, I am so happy that Clay said no, and in all honesty, I respect him for it. Do you know what a man who is truly evil, abusive, and narcissistic could do with a woman like AD. This show aside, like, for, forget this show. Do you know what someone can do with a woman like AD, with a woman who has that desperate, I need a man. I don't care what he shows me. I don't care what he does. I just want to be married. Do, did y'all not see Risa Tisa? Hello. In all honesty, I think that it is dangerous for AD to be out here dating. And let me take AD out of it. Anyone out here to be dating with that mindset. Baby, you are food. Because if someone gets a hold of you, someone who has bad intentions, oh my God, they're going to F your whole life up. They're going to F your whole life up. I want better for AD, I want better for you, I want better for me, I want better for all of us, okay? For anyone who needs to hear it, your self-worth is not wrapped up in another person, it's in you, okay? 
Woo! Let me calm down. Let's get back to happier times because next we see Amy and Johnny. They're at the reception. And child, everyone's having a good time. And that's the episode. Tell me below if your predictions were correct. I was wrong on one couple because I just knew that Chelsea and Jimmy were going to get married because they're just delusional like that. Okay, I just knew that they were going dun, 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 keep doing that dance all the way past the altar to the reception. I just knew it. But I'm so happy that they didn't. I'm so happy that Clay and AD didn't get married. And congratulations to Amy and Johnny. They look beautiful together and I'm wishing them nothing but the best. At this reunion, however, everybody better show up. I don't want anyone pulling a damn Uche, skipping the reunion, okay? Kenneth, you better bring your ass to the reunion. Trevor, you better bring your ass to the reunion. Jeremy, you better bring your ass to the reunion. And bring Mackenzie too, because I want her to confirm if she even called Chelsea. I feel like when they ask Chelsea, Mackenzie gonna be like, girl, I don't even have your number. Like, I don't even up with you. So what are you talking about? I wanna hear about Trevor and those text messages. I wanna hear about Jeremy and his, you know, his ex fiance and what him and Sarah really did that night. Ask Kenneth what the fuck his problem is. Chelsea and Jimmy, I could handle about five more minutes of them. Clay, you always talk about your daddy. What about you? How were you in your past relationships? I would like to hear about that as well. I just hope that Nick and Vanessa ask good questions. I hope that they have been on social media and they see everything that's going on and that they don't spend time playing stupid icebreaker games or what celebrity would they like to sleep. We don't care about that, okay? Stay on topic and ask the right questions. But that's it, y'all. Tell me all your thoughts about this episode, about my review. What questions do you hope that they ask at the reunion? Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you know every time I post a new video. And I will see y'all next time. Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.